Hi, this is Marsha Hall and Grammy B. <laughs> my Alice mom, Brown. Alex Brown. Today we're going to read a book to you called Grandpa B's Birch Trees. It's a really special book in our family because it was actually written by my dad, Grammy B's husband. And for his 70th birthday, I, I had it made into a book for him. He's passed now. And he's no longer with us, but it holds a really special place in our heart. And we want to share it with you today. Bert Birch was the oldest tree in Grandpa B's yard in the northern woods of Wisconsin. Maybe the oldest tree in the entire forest. Most of his limbs were bare and dried. In fact, the only limb that Bert had was a giant limb that stretched across the backyard. This limb grew the only leaves that Bert kept alive, but still, he was a beloved tree at Grandpa and Grammy B's house. Bert had been a sapling when the Native Americans camped next to the lake. He had witnessed the first road carved through the forest and the first shacks being built. Bert was proud of his grandfather, who had been cut down by Native Americans to make a birch bark canoe. Bert had seen lots of trees come and go over the years, and he was relieved that Grandpa B had kept him around. All the trees in Grandpa B's yard were forest trees that had known the hardships of life. The Spruce family lived down by the lake and loved the shade and cool days. Barry Basswood lived nearest the bird feeder and always had chickadees housed around his limbs. Then there was Maud and Mary Maple, they were two separate trees who had grown so close together that the base of their trunks were now one. The Maple sisters were always bickering with each other. Maud would say, you get more sun than I do. Mary would reply, you get more rain than I do. On and on they would bicker with each other into the dark night. The rest of the trees had to learn to tune them out. One early spring day, Grammy Bee told Grandpa Bee that they needed a new tree for the bare spot in the yard. She wanted a pretty one that would give some nice shade for the grandkids when they came to visit. Grandpa Bee headed off to the tree nursery, but when he got there, none of the trees seemed right until he saw the most beautiful birch tree he had ever seen. Buddy Birch's trunk was straight and his leaves were a deep shade of green and in the perfect heart shape with sawtooth ridges. In the wind, his leaves danced and glistened. Grandpa Bee asked how much for that birch tree, but it didn't really matter because Grandpa Bee would have bought Buddy Birch no matter the cost. The ride home in Grandpa Bee's truck was scary for Buddy. He'd, he'd grown up in the nursery and he'd never been anywhere else. The wind was stronger than Buddy had ever felt. He hung on to his precious leaves as hard as he could and even lost a few. When they got home, Grandpa Bee started digging a hole. He dug the hole twice as big as Buddy's pot and threw some sand, mulch, and several scoops of plant food in the hole. Buddy felt Grandpa Bee pull his trunk out and popped out his roots. Buddy felt naked and his leaves shook as he screamed in shock. Grandpa Bee laid Buddy's roots in the hole and covered them with good black dirt. Soon his roots were covered and Buddy's toes began to stretch. He had felt so cramped in that pot and even though the feeling was different, he liked it. Then Grandpa Bee drizzled water over Buddy's roots. The fresh lake water felt good and it tasted even better. Buddy looked around at his new home overlooking Grandpa Bee and Grammy Bee's lake. The sun felt good on Buddy's leaves and he took a deep breath. There was room to grow here and Buddy was hopeful that he would like his new home. The Spruce family who lived down the hill couldn't see the new tree but sent word by a blue jay welcoming Buddy to the yard. Barry Basswood had to shout to welcome Buddy because the chickadees living in the limbs were too noisy. The Maple sisters were gushing the loudest over Buddy saying, oh, what a beautiful little birch. Just look at those leaves. Where did he come from? Bert, is he from your seed? Did you sprout a new root? Bert would only hum and say, he's just a sapling. 
that little, that big yellow dog will chew him to splinters in a couple of days. But a slight feeling of pride came over Bert at the thought of the little sapling coming from him. Woodpeckers are the doctors of the forest. When a woodpecker lands on the tree, it does a valuable job of eating bugs, pecking moldy wood from the tree, and picking leaves that are infested with caterpillars. Perry the pileated woodpecker was the head doctor in the forest. He would inspect a tree and call in all the other woodpeckers to go to work. A few days after Buddy joined Grandpa B and Grandma B's tree family, Perry visit, visited Bert. The woodpecker crew took lots of bugs from Bert's dead limbs and picked off all the leaves that, he, that needed it. When the job was done, Perry and Bert had a long talk. Bert, Perry said, you haven't got many good leaves left and most of your upper limbs have fallen off. If you're not careful, your last limb is going to blow off when the cold winter wind blows. I know, said Bert. I still got a couple of good summers and maybe I can look after that little sprout. Grammy and Grandpa B's grandkids, Nadia, Lucy, and Isaac, spent the whole summer playing around Buddy and the rest of the trees. They enjoyed watching the baby birds that nested in Buddy's limbs grow and fly off. They sat on a blanket and read stories under the shade that Buddy provided. Buddy Birch quickly became the prettiest tree in Grandpa's yard, maybe even in the whole forest. Buddy's trunk, limbs, and leaves were perfect because he'd been protected from the harsh elements at the nursery. Like most trees, Buddy enjoyed autumn the most because he got to change his leaves to bright yellow, red, and orange. In the nursery, he was able to keep his colorful leaves until spring when he grew new ones. Buddy was very proud of his leaves. All the trees prepared for the fall with great anticipation. Even Bert loved to show off his leaves and the beauty they displayed in the fall. Some trees would test the leaves in late summer by turning one or two early. Many times this was to fool the other trees, giving them a peek at the color they would choose when the big autumn extravaganza would come. Maud and Mary were particularly good at outdoing each other. Bert would usually signal to the other trees when it was time to turn. He would watch the sky for the geese flying south. When Bert started to turn his leaves, the other trees did too. When Bert was younger, he would turn his leaves the most vibrant shade of red. However, as the years went by, his leaves were not as bright. As autumn came to a close, Bert said to Buddy, lose the leaves, sprout. But Buddy said with pride, I'm strong enough and Grandpa B will protect me. Maud and Mary stepped in and said, now dear, the snow is so heavy and if the wind is strong, we'll lose you, my dear. But Buddy was prideful. No, he said, I like my leaves and I'll be okay. One warm November morning, the wind was blowing from the south and it almost felt like spring. But when the sun came up, the sky was bright red and the clouds were orange. The older trees in Grandpa's yard were bare. They had lost all their leaves weeks ago. The forest trees across the road were also bare. But Buddy Birch had a full crown of beautiful orange leaves and he beamed with delight at his accomplishment. By noon, the wind blew stronger and stronger. Dark clouds started to build up the northwest and the lake had white foamy caps blown up by the wind. Bert, Maud, Mary, and the other trees quickly shed the rest of their leaves on their limbs. Bert said, I've seen this weather before. There's an ice storm coming. He was right. By mid-afternoon, it started raining. By the time Grammy and Grandpa B were eating dinner, the rain was cold, colder than Buddy had ever felt, and his wet leaves still on his limbs began to feel heavier and heavier. As the darkness of night began, the temperatures dropped, and Buddy could feel the sting of small ice pellets hitting his leaves. Buddy asked Bert, what do I do, Bert? What do I do? Bert could only say, be strong, sprout, and get rid of those leaves. Buddy began letting go of his leaves, and some started to drop to the ground. 
but he found that the ice had started freezing the leaves to his twigs and the leaves just would not drop. The weight of the freezing water began to bend his limbs toward the ground. The ice made them feel heavier and heavier. As the light went out in Grammy and Grandpa B's house, the rain began to change to snow. Not light, fluffy snow, but heavy, wet snow that stuck even more to Buddy's leaves. As the snow fell, Buddy's trunk began to bend even farther. Buddy tried to shake the snow with the wind, but the leaves now covered with heavy, wet snow would not shake like they did in the warm summer breezes. The pressure on his trunk was very painful, but there was nothing he could do. Buddy cried out, I should have listened to Bert. Bert began to swing his only remaining good limb toward Buddy. If only he could knock the snow from Buddy's limbs by hitting them with his own limb. Maybe he could knock the snow off those stubborn leaves and he could help his friend. Bert looked down at his little friend. What else could he do to help? Buddy cried as his trunk was close to breaking. I can't take the weight. I can't stand this heavy snow. Help me, Bert, help me. Then there was a great sound of a crack. Crack, bam, thud. Grandpa B woke with a start and rolled out of bed. He ran to look outside. There he saw Bert's last good limb covering the little birch tree. He went back in and said to Grammy B, we just lost that old birch tree, but everything is okay. Bert's limb had fallen on top of Buddy and knocked most of the icy leaves off. His trunk remained like an upright pole where he had grown for so long. Buddy was confused as he looked at his leaves lying in a pile. Bert had saved Buddy. In the morning, Grandpa B took Bert's limb off Buddy and shook Buddy's trunk. The rest of the snowy leaves fell to the ground. Buddy's trunk and limbs were now straight again. All of the trees mourned for Bert. Mary and Maud let out a sorrowful creak every time the breeze rubbed their trun trunks together. Grandpa B cut several thin slabs from Bert's trunk for a special project. Bert's memory would live on because Grandpa B would use the wood to mount pictures of his family. As time went by, Buddy Birch got stronger and stronger. His trunk grew straight and very tall. His leaves began to give shade to the yard, providing a cool place to sit in with the hot summer sun. Buddy was still very proud of his leaves, but he had learned his lesson. When the cold wind blew and the days grew short, he would drop his beautiful leaves and remember his good friend. Many years later, Nadia, Lucy, and Isaac came to visit Grandma B and with them Grammy B's beautiful great-granddaughter. They all sat in Buddy's shade while Nadia read them a story. The book was about someone who learned to not be too proud because of the sacrifice of a great friend. Thanks so much for reading with us. Thanks.